Welcome back to Ally Bullies TV, and today we have Cleveland Frenchies who has been in the kitchen cooking up when it comes to breeding French Bulldogs. They are no stranger to the dog show scene with one of their female Frenchies winning baddest female in the stack off against all bullies at the Bully Con in 2023. This camp has won multiple ribbons and trophies. Please welcome to the show, Cleveland. Frenchies. Thank you, you for having us. having us. I'm DeAndre of Cleveland Frenchies. This is Nicole. Yep. We're the owners of Cleveland Frenchies. All right. Um, before I get started, um, for the viewers that's watching, you know, on YouTube, if y'all can, you know, subscribe, like, comment. That's gonna help us with the algorithm, you know, push it out so more viewers can, you know, view this content because you know, on this channel. We've been dropping, you know, good content and, you know, very informative videos. So if you could help us out, you know, subscribe, yeah. like, and comment. We appreciate it. Definitely. All right. Um, first off, I want to I wanna ask, you know, is Cleveland Frenchies like a franchise, a kennel, or, you know, a group of friends? Explain, explain, kind of explain the relationship amongst the people who are uh, a part of Cleveland Frenchies? It's a, a kennel. Uh, we basically, we, we're thinking about franchising. We have people hit us up, you know, asking us about using the name and things of that such. But at this point, it's just us right now. We want to build the name up. Like you said, with our, we got our own production out when the shows and things of that nature. So right now, it's just us trying to build Cleveland Frenchies. We might Think about adding in franchises and all that later, but anybody who has bought like you know puppies from us co-owns, we consider them Cleveland Frenchies too. They part of the family, so it's it's a it's a family. <laughs> it's a family for sure. So like they, they are able to call us, you know, two three in the morning, and people that have purchased dogs from us ask us any questions. We gonna stand behind our product, you know. At the end of the day, right. yeah, it's a it's a family family of friends, sure. like you said for sure. So as of as of right now, um, it's it's just y'all two really. That's yeah, the main just, head members. Yeah. You know, everything else kind of co-owned, and you yeah. know, people that bought dogs from y'all. Yep. All right. Um, run run me back through a little history on how you got into the dogs. So I've always been a dog lover. Um. Growing up, we've always had dogs. Um, like literally my whole life, we've always had dogs. And about 11 years ago, um, I purchased a German Shepherd. Um, she was the OG of everything. She's the one who got me started and made me want to start breeding. And she actually uh, passed away yesterday, but- Okay, sorry she, to hear that. Yeah, thank you. But uh, she's the reason for it all, to be honest with you. All right, Um, what is it about the French bulldog that makes it your choice of dog to breed when it comes to breeding dogs. Funny because we ain't even we ain't planning on breeding yeah, Frenchies. At all. We got our daughter of Frenchie for her birthday, her third birthday. Mm -hmm. And it's like everywhere we went with this dog. Damn, everywhere we went kid. with this dog, it's a lot of attention. You know, and then it's like it was like a whole different Community. Right. Community. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So but that's basically what got us into it. Though. We fell in love with Frenchies being around other people. We're meeting at the parks and stuff. They're inviting us out. We're like, dang, like it's like a whole lifestyle with these dogs. Right, right, right. So, yeah. So, yeah. basically, right. we went from that. The French community is a whole different kind of community. I'm telling you. It's not like any other dog. Yeah. But we feel like we got adopted in literally just getting our first Frenchie Mowgli. And like I said, it wasn't to breed. We bought him as a pet. He wasn't a dog to breed and everything. It's just. Being out with him, a lot of people, we exchanged numbers and all that, was doing play dates and all that. And then we just like, dang, this something people really into, you know, and she was already into dogs, so she came up with the idea. Where and then, like, then I would say we started studying him out, and then that's when it really happened. Yeah. Once we started studying him out, and that's when we were like, okay, well, we could do this. And then, then we got a female, and then that, it started from there. Like a year later after having Mowgli almost. Before yeah. we even decided to breed Frenchies, we had a Frenchie for almost a year. So, yeah. you know, we got to know his personality and everything, fell in love with him. Yeah. All right. Um, the reason I'm asking why you chose to breed French Bulldogs is because I recently came across the post on Instagram by Dog 
Culture Media TV. Shout out to them. If you're not already following them, go over to their page and give them a follow. That's Dog Culture Media TV on Instagram. The post said, uh, Frenchie crisis. The market has been saturated and flooded with Frenchies that have health issues. They said pups are being given away to rescues because breeders can no longer sell them. And a lot of these dogs are being dumped at these shelters because breeders don't want to deal with the issues of bad breeding like skin issues and soft palates and other things. As a French bulldog breeder, what are your thoughts on this when you hear, hear something like this? People ain't testing their dogs. Yeah, we health no, test all of our major. dogs. So the do. mom and dad will always be health tested. So there will be no reason that any of my dogs will ever have health yeah. issues. And like, if we don't feel comfortable about something like we use at Bark, and then if we still not liking what we're seeing, we have though animal genetics, and then, you know, it's OFA. Like, we run our dogs through them tests to really know what's going on, you know, with hips, IVD, all that type of stuff. Like, you got to really health test these dogs. Because like you said, there's a lot of people out here that's just selling anything. They in there for the right. money. They're not trying to better the breed. They're just trying to make a dollar. So those are the breeders you got to watch out for. That's in a way. Right. Yeah, it, it sounds like y'all on top of y'all stuff and, and y'all doing it the right way, man. Yeah, and um, sure. I take my hat off to people like y'all who doing it the right way. We're just going to breed these dogs. Yeah. Um, Brachycephalic, I'm not quite sure if I'm pronouncing that right or not, but brachycephalic dogs are uh, mainly flat-faced dog breed Correct, with yeah. shorter facial bones and muzzles. Mm -hmm. They say uh, such dogs can benefit from a surgery removing of the soft palate. Yes. Is this something that you ever had to have done? Yeah, so the surgery is actually called a BOAS, and... We actually did have the surgery done on one of our females. Um, we noticed that she needed it like about a year in. Um, we noticed that she was gasping for air and stuff, things like that. We took her outside, actually. Well, we had all the dogs out downtown and we were doing a photo shoot. And it was just like a normal day outside, probably like 70 degrees outside. And I noticed that she was gasping for air. We were only out there for like 10 minutes. And we had to rush her back to the car. I had to squirt lemon juice in her mouth, put alcohol in her paw pads. And thankfully, we didn't live too far from downtown, so we were able to get home pretty quick. And we got her together. But after that, um, I started researching the, the surgery, and I actually did end up getting the surgery on her. She got her um, soft palate done and her nose. So she got the in her throat and nose done. And we took her to a um, vet that specializes it in Indiana. Okay. So out of all my dogs, um, she's the only one who I've had to do it for. Um, and we actually got her from a breeder in California. She, we didn't produce her. Okay. So, but, and my dogs, we haven't dealt with it. Just, just her so far. And that again goes back to, like I said, health testing and everything. That's why that's super important because it's breeders like that. And um, like I said, you can take your, your dog to the vet and have them with a camera looking. Check that out. Pay attention yeah. to the way that your dog is breathing. You can literally hear it. The difference from the other Frenchies that we had, you can literally hear it. Like hear it. it's like it's such a struggle. Like I feel like it's like a flap or something that this just feel like something <laughs> stopping the. Something it's not breathing. like how people say, "Oh, Frenchies breathe like that." And it's a completely different. You can you can hear it. You wouldn't know. Like if yeah. you've been around a dog, really, you would definitely know. Like, no, that's that's not normal. Yeah, man, it's very informative information for me, myself as well. Like, I'm not familiar with French Bulldogs at all. So, you know, when I have reached out to Dre to do the interview, I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I, I'm trying to learn more about French Bulldogs myself. So, right. you know, me sitting down with y'all, I'm, I'm learning a lot already, you know, and I awesome. appreciate it. Um, what, what are some of the other known health issues that are associated with the French Bulldog breed, if any. I would any. say IVDD is very common in French Bulldogs. And um, the BOAS. And the BOAS. All, the both things are common. And thankfully, we have never personally had to deal with IVDD. Cause what, what, is, what is that? It's like a spine disc, some type of something it's with like your a, spine disc it's or a whatever. It's that like ruptures. Yeah. You know, like their back legs will give out and they can't walk. Yeah. And 
So they have to get surgeries. surgeries. And mm-hmm. a lot of times, even after the surgery, it can happen again. Yeah, they'll say it's, it's common to have, it's common to come back. Yeah, once it happens, it can happen again. So, so yeah, that's so that's something too that we test for too. Uh, but they say like that's just a common thing to an breed. But like I said, fortunately, we never had to yeah. work with anything like that. The thing is, like, most French Bulldogs are going to have one copy of it at least. So, what you got to do when you're breeding is. You need to make sure that you're putting it to a dog that doesn't have two copies or whatnot. And hopefully you can find a dog that doesn't have a copy at all. And then you'll be good. But you just that's that's why these health tests come come in handy because you really need to know you don't want to put two dogs with that together and then more you might end up dealing with that. Yeah, Thankfully we've it. never dealt with it though, yeah. so I can't say. Okay. Um for for people who you know they may be new to this and they, they, you know, they don't know where to go or they don't know the proper resources and things like that. Mm-hmm. What is a reputable company to get health testing done on French Bulldogs to make sure you're not breeding one dog with the health issue to another dog with the same issue? Mm-hmm. We, we use animal genetics and Embark. So both of them, um, Embark, Goes a little goes a little deeper. A little deeper. They'll yeah. get into testing some more stuff that animal genetics will. So if you're looking for like extreme testing, I, I would use Embark. Um, I mean, that's why we usually do both. Like I said yeah. Before, we put our dogs in both. Like I want to know. Yeah. So I would say that animal genetics and Embark were are my go to at least. Okay. Um. If I was purchasing a French bulldog from you, what are some things you would tell me? that I may need to know before purchasing a French Bulldog for the first time? Well, monitor your dog in right. the heat. Like we said, I said that happened within 10 minutes with her. So imagine people will just wreck their dog, they let their dogs outside. You open up the back door, you let your dogs outside, you walk away, you may be cooking or anything, come back and let them in. But that Frenchie is in the high heat, you want to monitor that dog and see how that dog is first you know stay out there with that dog and supervise and see you know you want to know what kind of dog you got like i said all of our other frenchies were perfectly fine never had any issues and it was that one dog so imagine if we would have left them out in the back and found that out the hard way you know so you want to supervise your dogs too when you get them and get to know them and make sure you know that they might not have that what is it the boas yeah it's, it's on, very common it's i common. can't tell you how many times i've seen posts on facebook and whatnot of people losing their dog to the heat walking on at the park like you gotta know your dog if they can handle that heat or something yeah. and on them real hot days when it's 80 90 degrees i literally let my dogs out to pee use the bathroom come right, right back in we ain't playing outside <laughs> none of that because right. it can happen quick and it's scary so and then with the ivd uh you should invest in a ramp like if you got stairs so your dog not, you know, throwing their body down the stairs, impacting all that. So we right. use a ramp on our back stairs. So when they right. come up and down, you know, it's easy on their back shoulders and all that. Is it is it any type of um, supplement that you give your dogs maybe to help with kind of like hip and joint issues? That's joint supplement. I don't know the name of it, though. I'm not sure that. <laughs> well, I don't know the name of it. But you do give we a do supplement, give though, for the hip so and joint? I vitamins, supplements, um, all kinds of stuff yeah, for those yeah. those reasons. Um, definitely. All right. Um, I saw a screenshot of a text from one of your customers on your Instagram story. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to read what it said. Okay. The message said, thank you so much for trusting us. My vet said, I don't know what your breeder is doing but he's doing it right. I usually see Frenchies with so many issues, but yours is perfect. Yeah. How did that make you feel getting that type of feedback from a customer? And how important is it to you to provide your customers with a quality French Bulldog? It made me feel great. Amazing. Reading like that was like the best thing I ever read. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So definitely. Um, and all my customers, they're they're like family to me like when i sell a dog to somebody i don't just sell them a dog and just talk to them in two years like i talk (laughs) right i talk to the people who purchase puppies from me on an everyday basis like we have relationships like they turn into family i talk to them all the time like and it's a good feeling i don't i wouldn't like to just send my dogs out and then just not talk to them ever again i check up on every last one of my puppies i've ever sold 
Yeah, cause we we purchased a dog from a big name breeder before, and you know when you go back to ask some information or anything like that, you can't even get through to the person no more. Like once they got your money, they're gone. So that's a big thing for us. For us going through right. that, we like we never want our customers to feel that way. So I strive like to I make sure that literally happen. we build relationships and stand behind our product. Like you call us for anything, mm -hmm. we got you. You feel me? If it's advice and something major, something minor, give us a call. We'll help you figure it out. And if we don't know, you said we go to shows, we know a lot of, you know, other breeders that's been in the game for years who know a lot more than us. You know, right. we built them relationships with where we can call them, hey, you ever experienced this? We got one of our clients that's going through this. Can you, you know, give us some info on it? Like we go make sure that we figure it out for them yeah. before we just send you to a vet and dump your money. Like we, if we can figure it out, we're going to figure it out before you get to have to do all that. So we stand Definitely. behind our product. Yes. With the French Bulldog breed being so oversaturated with breeders, what does Cleveland Frenchies do to separate themselves from so-called competition? I wouldn't even look at anybody as competition, exactly. to be honest with you. Um, as we tell everybody, don't compete, collab. Right. That's the way you're going to survive in this game. Don't come in with a chip on your shoulder, got something to prove, trying to compete with everybody. That ain't the way to go. We don't look at nobody as competition. At all. And then I would say, I mean, pretty much the same answer to the last question, what makes us different is we stand actually take the restaurant. time and stand behind our puppies. And I will talk to you at any time of the day. You call me at 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm picking up. Let me know what's going on. I'm going to help you figure this out. And I would say that from our personal experience of us purchasing puppies, we didn't get that same yeah. that then, same thing. So we get people that hit us up who then got dogs from other people and they're asking us information. And it was like, dang, that's sad that you yeah. can't get in touch with your breeder to get this information. You gotta come to us to get it. I mean, we don't have a problem with getting our info anybody. It's just crazy to me that yeah. they can't can't get in touch with the person that they that spent they all this money with from. on his dog. <laughs> Like, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. so I would say what that's what separates us, us is that. There's sure. a lot of that going on. If you want the money, it's gone. Yep. Yeah, I was going to say that's that's common practice. Mm -hmm. It's sad to, to say that, but it's common practice all across the board with dogs, period, where you got big name breeders who sell these dogs. And after they sell you a dog, Good luck trying to get in contact <laughs> right. with them, trying to ask them a question. Right. It, it's, it's more of the smaller breeders the people who actually care about the dogs that actually you know yeah they're accepting all calls all texts and they helping people out right um what is what is the one thing that you would do differently if you were starting your kennel today with the knowledge that you got now Ooh, uh, Mowgli, uh, <laughs> a structured dog. Yep. When you get in out here and you looking for a Frenchie, don't just go looking for a color. Our thing like was, it was a dog that was just a pet for us originally anyway. So our whole thing was Merle, Merle, Merle. We didn't care about what the dog looked like or anything. And that's our dog now, he's fixed. We don't even use him for our program. Like I said, we started off studying him and everything. And then the more we got to go on the shows and figuring out the look of dog that we wanted is like, He's not the look we're going right. for. We don't want that to represent our brand. We fixed him, you know? Right. <laughs> so I'll have to say it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Structure first. Structure first. Don't just you go just, looking for color, man. When you when you know yeah. that, you'll be you'll be good. You're going to take losses if you just go looking for color. I'll say that. For Most sure. definitely. Structure never goes out of style. Everybody's going to always want structure. So do your due diligence and actually go to some shows and look at the dogs and figure out what your style of dog is. Before purchasing. Can you break down for the viewers the differences between quote unquote structure and DNA? I say structure breeders are better in the breed. You know, they got a purpose. DNA, they're bringing in flaws. You know, it's more about what they're trying to, you know, there's a lot of experiment going around, bringing in these new genes, pink and all that. Bringing in all that stuff is bringing in flaws too. That's going to be, have to be let her bread out. So I'll say that the structure breeders got longevity for sure. Everybody's going to always want a structure, structure dog regardless. You know, like I said, that's there. I feel like they're better in the breed. Can't really say the same for DNA breeders. Now the structured breeders, the structured dogs, them is more the original 
AKC show type dogs, the standard right? Of what a Frenchie should be, yeah. Okay, and the DNA is kind of you know all the Merle and yeah, fluffy dogs and, with right. with muzzles, and <laughs> they're still figuring it out. Yeah. Well, if you start your program with structure, then you can add that DNA to do the right way. Later. Yeah. But if you start with the DNA, then what do you really have? Yeah, you're breeding out tails, muzzles, and a lot of other flaws oh, that could come right. with that. And, it, yeah, it's a headache. Now it's going to take you years to get the structure. Right. Right. You got the color and all this, but nobody wants to use this dog because it don't even look like a Frenchie cat. You're still working out the kinks. <laughs> right, right. I was watching a podcast on YouTube, and uh, a French bulldog breeder had mentioned that there's a, a new DNA type French bulldog here. He called it a flutal, a French bulldog poodle mix. Yeah. Are you aware of this, and what are your thoughts? I, I just like just started seeing it recently, yeah. so I'm not too educated on it. But I want to say that it's hyperallergenic or something. Maybe that's the reason why they're doing it for people who like Frenchies and can't have one. So I guess I mean I kind of see it, but I, like I said, they're not calling it a, 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 a Frenchie, so it's not in the same category. So I can respect that that they're not saying you know this is a Frenchie; it's a poodle. Right. right. I can't briefly say that, so yeah. I can't really say I know much about yeah, it. Yeah, me neither to really talk too much on it, but yeah, I have seen them going around. So <laughs> the new breed. Mm -hmm. It it's twenty twenty four, and there's a wide variety of French bulldog types out here. Mm -hmm. For the viewers watching, can you name the different varieties of French bulldogs that now exist? Yeah, there's a lot actually. Um, velvet, husky, koi, pink. Uh, the list goes on. Wire, Wire hair, hair, hairless. Hairless. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's a lot. Like, like it's so steel. many. <laughs> oh my God, like it's, steel. it's definitely it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of different things out here right now. Um. Now, when it comes to DNA and genetic testing. I believe there's something called a color code panel test. Maybe y'all know the correct terms. Uh, explain why you would want to have this type of test done and also what reputable companies can perform this test. So I would get this test done because what it's going to do is it's going to tell you everything that your dog carries. So you get the test done, you know that your dog carries a fluffy, maybe... Um, chocolate things of that nature and then when you're ready to breed that dog you're able to match it up to the right dog and then you guys can put your your dna in this thing called colored my frenchie it's an app and then you can see the potential outcomes of your future litter so you can literally say okay well i'm gonna have this this and this in my litter like i know it already and the only way you're gonna figure that out is if you do the um trait and color test and I would say um, animal genetics or Embark again for the same test, honestly. I would say animal genetics more because, like, that's what everybody using. We was yeah. using Embark, and, like, we would ask people, what does this mean? And they're like, I'm not used to, like, I think for Fluffies, it was, like, G2, yeah, G1s. Yeah. People used to L4s, L1s, and all that. That's what animal genetics do. Right. So Embark is, like, a lot harder a lot. to read. And then when right. you're asking people info, they only used to the L4s and all yeah. that. So. Animal, animal genetics animal is straightforward yeah, when it comes to the it's trait. It's a lot simplified and everybody uses that. So it's, I would say animal genetics for coat, for coloring, over and bark. Yeah. Just for that reason. What, what is the typical price to have a health test or genetic color coat panel test done? I would say around $150 to $200. Okay. And that's for that's for a health test and a uh, yeah, color yeah. code panel test. Mm -hmm. It'll be everything in one. Oh, okay. Um, I had another guest on the show previously, um, Neptune Bullies, and I asked him how much French bulldogs typically cost. But today, I want to ask you why French bulldogs are so expensive. What makes a French bulldog 
be kind of price high. That they're so expensive due to the fact that these Frenchies are damn near man made. man-made. Like we got to do the AIs. We they gotta get C sections. The AIs, the C section. And the stuff is not cheap. And you got to you paying for a stud. You might have a three thousand dollar stud, a three thousand dollar C section. Yeah, some people, you know, we work. Some a lot of people don't want to take the time off work. They'll have somebody whoop their litter. That's five, six hundred a week to whoop that litter with somebody that knows that breed to do it the right way. So it's a lot of money. Well, the list goes on of how much yeah, money you're spending it's a lot throughout that spending. litter. Yeah. So that's honestly why you're, yeah. you're spending a lot of money to get the Frenchies here. Like you said, this ain't your dog. You're just going to let out in a while and they're going to eat up there. <laughs> right, 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 right. We're doing everything and everything costs too. Literally. Um, Especially when you're doing it right. Right. It's been a lot of people, you know. I've been watching, like, you know, they be getting these DNA dogs from over in the UK and bringing them back over here. Um, is that something you, you all would ever think about doing, is importing one of those dogs from the UK? We have a dog from Romania that we had. Yeah, we <laughs> our first Romania. female, our foundation female, who gave birth to the girl that's winning all the things. We got her from Romania, but like I said it wasn't but for color. It wasn't for DNA, thing. though. It was because of structure. Her dad and everything up there were mm-hmm. solid freaking Frenchies, like big block heads and all that, like yeah. big features on the Frenchies that made us fall in love with them. So yeah. it was worth the money getting her shipped over. Most and that's been our foundation. As you, like I said, you see what her daughter out here doing now. So yeah. she definitely was the, de- the definition of a foundation female. Right. And actually, uh, David Dalton from Dalton Gang Bullies got her for us. Yeah. Yeah, so he, he was, had his he had sister. A, yeah, a lot more of them get like four dogs. I think he got breeder. like four dogs. <laughs> yeah. That that time, he, put us in the pot he looked out for us, and that's how we got our team. female. Yeah, shout out to the gang. Mm-hmm. She's the one who basically started it all for us. Yeah, that was our first female. So we didn't start breeding until her. But Mowgli was right. just a pet originally. We ended up studying on the fifth one. That was our the dog that we bought with the purpose that we knew that we were going to breed. Right. Yeah, the reason I was asking, because, you know, like I said, I'm new to the French Bulldog thing, but I've been, like, watching various different people, and uh, I've been hearing them talking about, like, you know, importing that new DNA over here because they want to be, you know, the first, exactly, the first, the first one with it. And I was watching, you know, on the podcast, they was talking about that as far as, like, what, what would you rather be, you know, the first? with it or would you rather be the one that that got the best you know that 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 perfected at all because it's not perfected yet you got to perfect it now you're not better in the breeding then it's like what you're doing with all the offspring while you building up to that where all that offspring going you know what i mean while you're still going from literally literally get the outcome that you're getting we're all less going we flooding and that's exactly where you come in we're saying the saturated market the flooding market with all these Dogs with health issues. I bet a lot of it is coming from that. People want to be the first at this and that, bringing all these flaws and DNAs, and then like, what well, I'm supposed to do with all these, all with all these puppies? This ain't right. the look I'm looking for yet. I'm still building to it. So I just be want to know where do all those dogs go? Right. Yeah, that, that nine times out of ten, that's where they going. Like you just said, they the ones that's going in these rescues and things yeah, like that because right. they can't find proper homes for these dogs that got issues or may got you know physical deformities and things like that that's showing. Um, so personally, no, we would not. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be the first. I noticed you you have been making quite a run in the show scene, picking up multiple trophies and ribbons. Mm-hmm. What What inspired you to begin showing your dogs at shows? So my good friend, Christina White, over at WW Quality Frenchies actually invited us out to a show um, and we decided to go check it out. And we th- we went to the first show. We didn't even show our dog at all. We just walked around and networked and talked with people. And the vibe was just a good vibe. And we loved it and we fell in love with it and from like that our, day. Our Instagram following like jumped that day too. Yeah. Like uh, it was a big jump. And it was like, like you said, people that's actually, you know, looking to do what we're doing or invest in the stud or something like that so it was it was definitely worth yeah. it that's what made us open up i was like dang this you got to get out that local mindset and hit these shows like a lot of people ask all the time like how y'all getting these customers up 
these shows, bro, these shows. We're not yeah. just trying to stay in Cleveland, finding people around here. You know, a lot of people in the city don't really support, you know, it's the shows getting out and you build your name out there, then the city follows behind a lot of right. times. That's yeah. just how it goes. Yeah, that's Very a good true. game, man. Yeah. What What are some things you do to get your dogs prepared for a dog show? I would say getting them used to being on a table. So, you know, put your dog on a table, get them used to being on a table, get them used to being on a show lead. Um, Remember our first experience with uh, Ryan on a table? Yeah, it's they'll cower scared. down. Yeah. They're scared. Oh, they don't want to be on a table. Yeah, so you have to make sure you practice that. With your dog. Out. Just go to a show and yeah, throw your dog out there. See what your dog is doing. Get them comfortable being on tables, yeah. walking. You know, I guess the sanction shows and the fun shows. So the sanction you want to get them used to walking, which we know. Right, yeah. walking on a leash. Yeah. When we first started showing with Sparkles, uh, with Unicorn Sparkles, she didn't know how to walk on a leash. So when I'm over here dragging her around the, <laughs> the ring and whatnot, and then I was like, oh, shoot, I got to get her together. Oh I started God, working too. with her every day and teaching her how to stand next to me, like how to trot, do all those things. And... Now she got it. Yeah, so it's like the you got to work, work with your dog every day and until until they got it. Yeah, you know, some of the things you want to do, boss blood on, stack them on the table. I would say even go around crowds, get them right. used to being around crowds because these dogs should be flooded and brown. You got to make sure the temperature right when they're, I mean, the, the temperament is right when they're around other dogs. You know, you see dogs on the table snapping at other dogs. Right. It's a lot of things. Yeah, hey, I just saw that. You don't want to be that person. Yeah, you want to get to know your dogs for sure. Take them and get them used to those types of Take them to dog parks. Take them places with you to the store. Yeah, that's what we did. Realize, you know, so you can figure them out. They need to be socialized before you just bring them mm-hmm. to a dog. So, and they're snapping at every, every dog. Every dog is not by. a show dog. You might not have a show dog, so you got to figure that out. <laughs> and it's better to do it at home than get to a show and you dogs trying to fight and attack everything. Now you sitting here and barking at everything. You, see, <laughs> you done drove four or five hours to a show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's funny. Um, my last guest I just had on the show previously last week. Um, he said that he would like to begin showing dogs in the show ring. Mm-hmm. What advice can you give to someone out there that's thinking about entering a dog show for the first time? I would basically like pretty much what we just said, work with your dog, work with your dog, put your dog on the table, stack your dog, take him for walks, do things like that. Just prepare your dog for that. And you just got to get out there and do it. Yeah, Man. even if you don't win nothing, it ain't all about yeah. winning either. We went to shows where we ain't winning nothing. And after we left the ring, there's people approaching us. Hey, man, what's your Instagram? That's a right. very nice dog. And all. Like, you, you don't have to win to, to no. Uh, network. No, <laughs> right. you possibly can get puppy sales from all it, that things like stud, that. Stud, stud to, someone stud. might want to use your stud. Like, it's, it's your more reasons. Out there in that ring in the middle where everybody can see you. Maybe you missed a couple of people just walking around at the show, but everybody's watching that ring when those yep. shows going on. So even if you ain't confident that you're gonna win something, just still get out there for people to see. And just dog. do it. Get your face, your brand, your dog seen. Yeah. When it comes to showing your dog, which one do you like better? The sanction show or the fun show? I like them both to be honest. Um I prefer sanction show just because you're able to showcase your dog. Like the people can actually see your dog, see them try. You can stack them like that. They're seeing everything about yeah, it. And just stack them onto the on the table. And the they box. just looking at stack your dog the like they watching your dog work. They watching your dog how do that everything. Dog walks, how it trots. You know, once it stops, how it stops. Is it going to like you know? It's a lot it's like really, training. So I feel it's like, like you showcase your dog a lot more with with the sanction show. But don't get me wrong, I still like fun shows. Yeah. And I still do fun shows. And when most of the times when we go to a show, I'm doing sanction and fun show. Yeah, you do both. So I'm sure. putting I'm doing sanction show, then when the fun show starts, I'm running over there too. I'm, I want it all. <laughs> right. And all the right. unicorns, sparkles, pictures, it's a bunch of ribbons. That's the sanction show, and there's always one or two trophies. And that's from the, the fun, fun shows. Show. <laughs> you know, the sanction show is mostly ribbons and things like that. Yeah. So I honestly like them both. <laughs> Would would you like to uh, one day show one of your dogs something that you produce in the AKC show ring, like maybe like you know the Westminster type 
Oh, most so, definitely. Definitely. Um, now, when it comes to the smaller French Bulldog breed, you know, I've been told it's better to get an AI, TCI, or surgical, and also a C-section. Mm-hmm. Kind of explain for someone that may be new to this the reason why. Why you want to do an AI? Yeah, AI, TCI, I mean, surgical, too, C-section. They're too short or whatever, you know, just so they're not overexerting themselves or risking them hurting themselves. We just collect and do the AI, and then that's going to ensure your, your litter, too. Right. And with the TCI, I don't know. I, I say TCI over everything because it's less invasive than the surgical. You already going to, you know, be cutting her open for the C-section and things. So I go the less invasive route, and it's the same outcome. Right. I feel so. A TCI. a TCI and then over AI too because the TCI, I feel like the AI is like a a, a, a guess work. You're guessing. Yeah, yeah. The TCI, you got the cameras. It's, it's the AI, it's but you can actually AI see see what you're doing, dropping it right where it's supposed to be dropped. You know, so I say the TCI is and definitely the, the best route. Surgery, you're getting the same result, so exactly. So we just seen people that do an AI, they hit two, three days and don't hit. We did a TCI one time and they hit every time. I still do AI. Don't get yeah. me wrong. If it's in the city or whatever. But when I'll we're shipping, AI. we do TCI over surgical. And other than that, if we're if it's an in-house and we're AI ourselves. Oh, right. uh, Dalton Gang! Okay. Shout out to Dalton Gang yeah. again. <laughs> he just showed me the AI, how to do the AIs and everything. Came over and got me together. So we're doing our own AIs too, and working on PG testing too next. Mm-hmm. We'll be able to bring all that, all them services to y'all soon. How important do, is that, um, you know, for people that's breeding dogs themselves to maybe, you know, educate themselves and learn how to do those things? You know, how important is that? Important. Super important. And like David was a real guy because like we were coming to him for all of our studs, you know, and they were working like nice at this time. And he literally stopped me like, this is something you got to learn, man. You got studs and they're working. This is something that you got to know. You know, I won't always be here. Maybe if I'm busy a day, you got people driving down and stuff. It's something that you need to know. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. Especially with working studs, you know. And then we were charged, and that was an extra charge for our customers. You yeah, know, they pay a stud fee, then they drive down, and then they also got to pay for an AI. So that should be free. I feel like that's included, you know, when somebody's spending and driving down to you. So now I'm able right. to tell all our clients, come on down, free AIs. You know, if you're getting a stud with us, that's something that we can now offer free. Okay. And that's what I want to do with our with the PG testing and all that soon too. Right. We lock in our studs. Like I want to offer those boys, services free. Yeah, so that's, that's super important. important to, to learn that. Yeah, if you a stud owner for sure, if, if that's the route you want to go, you gotta learn how to pull your studs. Yeah, yeah, that's cool, man. Um, is that some y'all? You know, you said dog and gang bullies, correct? Dog and gang. Yeah, that's some heat. That's something he kind of like, you know, showed y'all hands on, you know. Hands on. Came over to the house and everything. And literally, he showed us the first time I ain't quite get it. He came back another day. Like, he was like, I said, that's a good dude. And then we tried to pay him. He didn't even want any money. We still gave him money. He said, no, nah, man. He was like, that's a, he a solid dude for sure. So we got OG. Like I said, we got connections, relationships that's with people like that in the game. Got our female from Romania. Exactly. So- it's like it's it's always good to have people like that in your corner. And them the people you trying to you want to deal with because you gotta think he not trying to make no money. He could keep on making money off of all of the, you feel me the uh the, the freaking AIs that we bring in the studs we bring in there. He could have just been creepy like oh yeah keep it coming. He was a real solid guy to be like nah bro this something you want to learn man. you know what I mean so yeah that that definitely speak volumes on his character you sure. know because that's something he do is provide that service right. he could have kept mm-hmm. running it up on y'all and running it up on y'all but and instead you, be, you know you know how a lot of people be too that do ai's they want to show you their studs and stuff too you go and you bring your people over to their yard you know? they want to try to steal the customer and things like that that's something that you should know how to do you shouldn't be having that's to crazy. send your customer to other people yeah for it sure, because like you said, it's it. yeah. Everybody ain't solid like David. Some people right. might want to be in your guy ear, like, nah, you want might want to go with his stud. I got something. I've heard many stories of that, of that happening. Yeah. <laughs> you go to get an AI done, and they'll be like, actually, we want to go with this dog. You like what? <laughs> so yeah, that, I mean, it's, it happens every day in this in this breeding world. That's crazy. <laughs> that right yeah. there is crazy. If somebody set up 
the breed to my dog and we go over here to get the AI done and the the customer end up going with this dude's stud because he didn't talk her down or talk him down to using his that's crazy right there. Yeah. You look how more professional that they look too when you that they're sitting there doing that. They're doing it. Like, oh, this person got more experience. They know what they're doing. Right, right. <laughs> they're gonna look at so, you as a novice and look yeah, at them as you know, this these professionals, right. right? So make sure you surround yourself with the right people. With the right with solid, genuine people for real that want to see you win. Yeah. For sure. What's what's the procedure for setting up a C section with a veterinarian? And what's the estimated cost of having a C-section procedure done? So around 50 days, you'll take your dog in for an x-ray. Um, the vet will do an ultrasound, x-ray, whatever, see how many see pups how many are in there. So they know what they're looking what they're looking for when it's time for the C-section. Um, and then closer to your due date is when you're going to actually go in and get your PG test done. So say you're, you go on your due date a few days before they're going to do a PG test and it's all really going to go off of those numbers. Yeah, so once your dog cool. is at a two or under, then you're safe to pull, but you need to, you can't just go in a vet on day 62 and pull. Yeah. It don't work like that. That's not safe. So you need to take your dog in and get her PG test done. And that's how you're going to determine when to pull the puppies. Okay. Um. You answered the next question I was gonna ask. I was okay. gonna, I was gonna, I was gonna ask as far as time and how do you determine the correct date to bring your female in for a C-section? Well, but yeah. you, you, you wrapped it all up in one, so that's yeah. cool. Um, what are some of the aftercare things that need to be done following a C-section procedure? I would say you need to make sure your mom is producing. Um, our vet actually gives us a shot that we can take home with us. It's called oxytocin. And you give the shot every two hours and mom will start producing more and more. Um, basically, and I mean. When they're coming out of that anesthesia, you want to slowly introduce those puppies because some dogs do be aggressive. Too, yeah. So you want to slowly introduce some puppies to make sure she's in the right state of mind. And make sure water, make sure she keep her yeah, hydrated, hydrate food, food. Yeah, everything amazing. keep it nearby by her. Like right. right away as soon as you get home. Um basically just yeah, watch her, make sure she's eating, drinking, and and make sure she's producing for your puppies. Explain um what needs to be done to safely transport the mom and her puppies back home after having a C section procedure. Well, personally, we have an um, outlet in our car and we take our incubator with us. So we'll plug the incubator up and we put the pups in the incubator for the ride home. Um, we'll make sure mom has a nice comfy bed yeah, in the back. The whole back yeah, bed, put a bed and everything back there. Uh, but before we even do that, like we lay down like, you know, they're, they're bleeding and stuff too. Right. So we outfit the whole, like we'll go in and put down like a bunch of like wrap or anything, then over the wrap, we'll put down, you know, the covers over that. So, you know, if it's soaked through, you ain't staying in the car and everything. Yeah. But yeah, we set up the whole trunk area. We got the whole back set up for them. So they the got their incubator. And all that's yeah. um, comfortable on the way. And then one of us always sits back there. You know, right. whoever driving, the other person sitting back there. Monitoring mom the and the yeah, the pups and the baby. Yeah. And then if you, if you don't have an incubator, you could just simply use a heating pad. Yeah. So you can get a heating pad, get you a little tote. That's how we, when we first started, that's what yeah. we did um, we before we got an incubator. incubator. Because we got the outlet in the car, right. so it's just like. So you, you, know. can, you, you can get you a heating pad, put your heating pad in the tote, and then just same thing, set your mom up and just make sure your pups stay warm on the way home. And that's really it. All right. Um, is it anything else you know that you could do to familiarize the mom with the pups to make sure she accepts them? Yeah, we let her, before, uh, you know, we just start putting them on her, we go one by one each dog. You know, obviously we still like blocking the face just in case she's still under anesthesia and, you know, a little out of it, get slowly. aggressive. You want to slowly introduce, but we let her get the, you know, licking and stimulating and, you know, like her instincts kicking in after she gets the stimulating and everything. Right. But we do each pup like that after she stimulates, so, you one know, acknowledging them, then we put that pup on her, put another one in there and do the same thing. Now, is that something you 
you know, had to learn from learning experiences, like things you went through with a mom, or is that just something you know from you somebody picked up? else that I seen personally who literally had to put a um <laughs> a muzzle on their dog because <laughs> they were so scared that I guess the dog tried to go after the puppy while they were at the back, and they literally had to muzzle their dog. So I'm like, she's saying. Never think about that. Right. And it's all it takes. Split you got to think, like, because this dog is getting put under anesthesia. Uh, they didn't push uh, the dog, the puppies out naturally. They got a C-section. So they wake up and these puppies are here and they're like, what the heck? Like, groggy. they don't understand. They're groggy still. They don't even realize that those are their puppies. Yeah. Like, they didn't push them out. So that instinct didn't kick in for them. Yeah. So you, wanna help that come out you have to do that yourself. Thankfully, none of our dogs have ever been mean to their puppies. We haven't dealt with it, but... Like we like we said, we slowly introduce them and go from there. And we've never had anything happen to scare us or anything, but we we take those you hear a lot of steps. Stories, we hear it and see it. You see it on social media. Just gotta make sure you take those steps so that that doesn't happen to you. Um, it's twenty twenty four. We got quite a bit of the year left. It just started. What um. Do you plan on hitting any shows this year? And if so, what are some of the shows you plan on getting out to? So I really like the BRC shows right now only you because... Got a, you got a booth at the North Carolina show. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I, I do. I have a... Uh, what is it called? What's her show called? <laughs> uh, it's Rachel Brown uh, yeah, with Rachel Blackwater Brown Bulldogs. Um, have a show coming to North Carolina that all in the June. girls got a VIP. Do you yeah. Want to- you me, Christina, Christina another dogs, Christina from and Ace Bulldogs. Yeah, um, Samantha. Yep, Samantha, Samantha from Big Boy Bullies. Big we Boy all Bullies. went in on a booth together. A and we're going to go out there to North Carolina. Is um, that the, the one that's called the One Big Dog Show? Is no. that it? Oh, okay. I oh, know. I think that's in North Carolina. Oh, he's about to see, but no, it's Rachel Brown. Um, So we got a booth there. We'll be going to that one. And then I also, I like competing in BRC right now because I'm trying to champ Sparkles out in BRC because she keeps winning. So I'm just trying to champ her out and make her a champion in BRC. So I'm kind of chasing BRC right now, to be honest. So if a show got BRC, more than likely I'll go. Oh, the show's called The Battlefield in June in North Carolina. Concord, North Carolina, The Battlefield. Yeah, so that's where I'll have to actually booth at. But recently I haven't been getting booths. I'm just going. And, and I'm yo, and I'm working. Beat us there. <laughs> Beat us there. Yeah. <laughs> we working. <laughs> but yeah, that's the show. Yeah. What's that? Uh, I know y'all y'all recently just went to that show in Dayton, right? Wasn't yeah, that to, in Dayton? Yep, that was the Ohio Bully Hill Showcase. showcase. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How was it out there? It was a good time. Yeah. Sparkles took home best Merle that day from uh, Gary Watson. Mr. Merle, Mr. Talk, Merle talk. So, so. Her second time being in front of him. The first time she was only five months and she was judged by Mr. Merle Talk and June Williams. Yeah, her At first five time. Months, uh, out of three out of the three best Merle, she won. Third place. place with two other grown dogs. At but then five also <laughs> at five months old at that same show, she won best female. Yeah. At five yeah. months old. Yeah. So she's, from June Williams, that too. Girl is literally, she's, been, she's been working. <laughs> that's all that makes us feel so good because people have been able to see that at so so young, four and right. five months. People waiting for their dogs. Like, oh, you gotta wait eight wait for them to pop. She's been, she already had she's it. Been <laughs> it since three, four months. You've been seeing it at. As you can see, she went from third place best Merle to just getting the first place best Merle from Mr. Right. Merle Talk. Yeah, she's only getting better, and it's our production, so we're super yeah. proud of that. Super proud. The of best that. feeling is that it's your production. Yeah, exactly. You, you know, know what I mean? mean? Like it's not. This isn't a dog that I bought. I produced her. So that's what makes that's what makes it the best uh, feeling. Yeah. It's like that's my production out there. I'm gonna I'm gonna double back to that in one minute. Yeah. Uh, do you all plan on um, going to the Judgment Day show yeah, this year? I'm definitely going to um, check it out. And he just added BRC. So yeah. I'm yeah, stoked about did. that. <laughs> he did. Yep, so he did. that right yeah. there, I was already planning on going. Shows. Yeah. But yeah, when I heard that he included BRC, I'm like, yeah, I'm definitely yeah. going now. Yeah. Y'all was so. at the one last year, right? At the yeah. Ice Center. Yeah, mm-hmm. we uh, with Christina, Christina White. That's who won the thousand. The Frenchie stack off. That's who got us into the show. 
Yeah. But that's why I said we got a lot of OGs that's been genuine that we just been blessed yeah. to come in contact with these people. And they've been genuine, just showing love. Like, mm -hmm. never want nothing from us, always want the best for us. Yeah. You've been blessed to build another type of relationship. Yeah. Surround yourself with people like that. For sure. And you're going to be good. No, I'm going to go back to the productions. Productions, you know, for somebody who got dogs, for pets, it really don't matter. But to breeders, that's like, you know, having some stripes on your on your sleeve, you know. It what's the what's the big thing with, you know, being able to have productions versus, you know, a bought dog? Like, you know, if if I'm stacking with you and I bought this dog and your dog is produced, like what's what's the prestige as far as you know, I produced this dog. I didn't buy this dog. <laughs> I mean, you know what I would say about that? I mean, like I said, it's just that it's just that feeling that like you can go look at a dog. You can go look at a dog or whatever, like we were just saying how somebody could have seen Sparkles at four and five months and be like, man, that's a nice dog, I'm gonna go buy her. But to produce a nice dog, that's just it's another story. Right. Everybody not doing that. You seeing people put two nice ass dogs together and still might not get a production that's gonna right. go out and do the things you're doing. Mm -hmm. So it's just like like you said, it's just like having that strike. Anybody can go buy a nice, a nice structured dog, a nice colored dog, and get out there and win some stuff, good bloodline and all that. But producing a winner, that's another story. Right. You're still <laughs> gonna get the same trophy. Yeah, yeah, but you, we just take pride that that yeah. we actually, you know, made a dog that's worth being talked about from mm -hmm. our account. Productions also matter, you know, if you out at these shows and like you said, you went in with a dog that you produced and you got different people walking up on you, you know, hey, where, mm -hmm. where you get this dog from? And we produced yeah, this I'm dog. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, I want what you got. Yeah. You, you, got the, you got the recipe. Exactly. You got the vision. Yeah, I like the real vision, for sure. And you created it too? So it's like, you know. Mm -hmm. All right. Um. Before we get up out of here, what are your plans for 2024? Mm -hmm. And do you have any upcoming breedings coming up this year? We got something major coming. We don't really want to talk about too much, but right. out there just yet. Um, let's just say, like, <laughs> what? Um, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, but later that we, that we have planned, um, it ain't even for sale. Yeah, to be honest, yeah, it's, it's yeah, all for us. It's gonna so. be another off of Sparkles. We yeah. gonna be doing something with Sparkles here soon. Our her next heat, which yeah. will be in a month or so. Yeah, in this then. next month or so, and we got a nice stud. Uh, a nice stud. We are gonna be adding something else to our program. Maybe yeah. some fluffy. <laughs> right, right. And okay. We're doing it the right way. Yeah, and they're not even. I'm not even trying to tell them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Right. And another one to where we last I won't get too much into that. It's right. yet to be announced yet. <laughs> Y'all gotta stay tuned for that. But yeah, we got we got two major breathings coming up and they might like be what like a month apart too. Probably about a month apart, yeah. 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 So you will be seeing it real soon. We do have a um female right now who's pregnant though. Um we have Raya, she's about four or five weeks pregnant yeah. right now. Uh, we put her to our boy Dolce. In house. In, ho in house with her. Well, and, uh, home. Yeah. So, Colon, um, Antoine Bennett. So, that litter will be up for grabs. We already got two lock ins on it. So, early lock in uh, will be $500. And then we say the rest can just pop up. Two of them are already reserved and they're not even here yet. So, jump on the fire. That's, that's, that's coming soon. All right. Um, how can people reach you if they want to you know place a deposit or you know discuss can, things about um, the pups they can reach us on instagram they can reach us on facebook on uh facebook it's cleveland frenchies um my personal facebook is nicola saxton on instagram is cleveland frenchies or they can even give us a call our numbers out uh, there too the gmail or... uh cleveland frenchies at gmail.com so oh, okay. everything just cleveland frenchies and I'm very responsive, so. Yeah. I'm gonna say this. Um, I I enjoyed this interview right here. Um, I learned a lot. Like I said, I'm not a French bulldog breeder. Yeah. I don't really know too much about it. I learned a lot. I feel like there's so much more for me to talk to you all with. Yeah. But I don't want to hold I you. I feel the same. <laughs> yeah. I don't, don't want to hold you all hostage all day. <laughs> we need um, that, man, for sure. Yeah. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. Us, 
that's just what I was going to ask is, you know, if possible, I want to double back and bring y'all back on for Almost part definitely. two. And Maybe even when that, when, when Sparkle's litter come, we'll bring you bring a pup in. vaccinated, we'll bring <laughs> okay, that yeah. sounds good. Um, we'll double back. I'll reach out to yeah. you all after the litter drops sometime, and you know, I definitely want to bring y'all back on, man, for part two, three, yes, four. Right. I enjoy, you know, sitting down with y'all, and I appreciate you know lending y'all time to me today. Of course, yeah, true, we appreciate you. All right, Ally Bullies TV, and we out of here like yesterday. This episode of Allied Bullies TV is being brought to you by K9 Super Supplements Puppy Formula. This awesome supplement contains green tripe, goat's milk, biotin, along with six other ingredients to promote growth and development, support immunity, digestive health, bone health, and also skin and coat health. Head on over to K9SuperSupplements.com today and grab yours.